right here in the city of Gary uh, on Tuesday morning around midnight, just after midnight, uh, three young people died and seven others were sent to the hospital in a shooting that took place at what appears to be a holiday block party on 1900, and, 1900 block of Missouri. Uh, the deceased were identified by the Lake County Coroner's Office as Lawrence Mangum of Maryville, Ashanti Brown of Olympia Fields, Illinois, and Marquise Hall of Lafayette. Each person suffered multiple gunshot wounds and their deaths have been ruled homicides by the coroner's office. Uh, the, the GPD said they were called out there at 12.46 a.m. Tuesday to Missouri Street for a report of several people with gunshot wounds. Officers said that they arrived to discover three people down and unresponsive. Seven others were discovered with gunshot wounds. Wow. Uh, according to Don Westerfield from the Gary police, the gunshot victims were transported to local hospitals by ambulance as well as cars. Uh, but, and due to the enormity of the, the scene, mutual aid was requested from surrounding police agencies. Wow, Rev, this is a, mm -hmm. this is a, a really horrific story. You know, even, even in a city like Gary, where again, I was here during the murder capital era where, yeah. All you heard was, oh, Gary's murder capital world. I, you know, anytime I tell anybody from Gary, they go, ooh, you guys the murder capital. Even living through that and the type of insane violence we had during the 90s, these type of stories are still heartbreaking. They still injure. They still, these people, these young people's lives mattered, folks. They, they did. And uh, a cousin of our mayor, Gary, our, our mayor, uh, Jerome Prince was among the three people who got gunned down, unfortunately. Not that his death is any more important than anybody else, but it, again, it is to illustrate that no matter who you are, you can be touched. It doesn't matter if your cousin's the mayor. It doesn't matter if your cousin is uh, the, the president. It doesn't matter who your, who your cousin is. It doesn't matter who your father is or your mother is. The, the, the contagion of violence touches us all. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me get this call really quick, Rev. Let's see. Hello, Hello. caller. Yes, uh, Scott and, and Rev. What's this up? This is uh, Vernon Smith. How are you doing? Oh, oh, hey, Dr. Uh, Rev. Smith. Dr. Smith. Yes. Listen, uh, I know both of you very well read it. Uh, I suggest that you Google, uh, I don't know the exact title of the uh, publication, but if you if you just put in uh, what America can learn from Japan about gun violence, right? Uh, you are to read those, uh, those that series, right? Okay, I just right. want to throw that out there. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Japan Japan had that one shooting, but yeah. they don't have they don't have shooters. they don't have all the violence that we had. They do no, not. They don't. No, they don't. I, and I'm glad you. I actually thought about bringing that up because their former prime minister Shinzo Abe. Uh, for some context, was just assassinated today, right. this morning, yes. uh, right when I was about well, to go to bed. I was like, man, oh, man, they didn't kill the Japan's uh, uh, ex-prime minister. Yeah, he, but. Oh, he died? I didn't, I didn't know he had Yes, died. he is. He actually passed away this oh, morning. Yeah. And oh, okay. uh, after five hours of surgery. But a lot of people, particularly a lot of conservatives, jumped on to say, well, this is proof that prohibition doesn't work. But then the numbers came out. There was only one homicide yeah. in the yeah. entire country, gun homicide in the entire country of Japan in 2021. Right. Yeah. Right. They do kill people now, but they do, but not, not by with gun. guns. Not with guns. They and can't get a gun. What well, used other, to be? Every other country controls the uh, the the, the uh, their citizenry having guns, and I really don't believe, if you really study the Constitution, that they meant that everybody could be a part of the wild wild west it was a it was a statement in response to england that they had the right to have the, uh, a well organized militia it wasn't about everybody being able uh, to use the southern language which i didn't hear until i was in my 20s to tote a gun right so <laughs> and, and, well, and, and you know go ahead the, the thing is though in that context where uh, basically they expected every able-bodied male to be able to respond um, to aggression. Right. And in right. order to do that, 
you had to be armed. You had to be able to, you know, handle a musket, so on and so forth. Now, you know, there is the argument of, well, you know, they didn't have the kind of weapons we have now. But they did have what was state-of-the-art at the time. True, true. They, they weren't expecting people to be carrying blunderbusses while the British Army was carrying rifles. Um, having said that, I could see a case to be made uh, for some weapons being not a lot, uh, forbidden from production, not because... You can't make a gun just as lethal that doesn't look like an M16, but simply because in the minds of certain types of people, there's something glamorous. Right. You know, something, it's like the difference between the Jedi and the um, uh, Sith. Mm. You know, being a Sith is, is you, you wear the black, you get to use the dark side of the Force, you get to use your emotions. There's something uh, exciting about that. Right. The reality is indicate, they're both using the same thing, though. Let me just indicate that uh, even if you consider it a right, we have a we have a responsibility to control and 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 to mo modulate rights. For example, we have a right to vote. But you, 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 there, there's some guidelines that are set up for that. We don't want to have any guidelines set up for, for, for weaponry and for, for guns. Oh, like I don't, I don't, anybody I don't can think do that's it. true. I don't think that's true but, either. Well, yeah, yeah, but look, when we try to control, just like what you just said, I've introduced that bill multiple times to get rid of, of assault weapons that you can buy on, on a common basis. Yeah. I've even introduced legislation that said when we had gun permits, that you have to give them a, a sheet of safety tip. They won't vote for any of those things. They don't want to regulate it at all. Well, and, and that's when anything, anything you don't regulate gets out of control. Yeah, they're reacting, though. They're reacting to a straw man. I agree with you. They are reacting to a straw man, but, you know, that's what they're doing politically. Yeah. That's why you you can never you would never get a conservative to say, yeah, we should, we should uh, make it where... Uh, there's no such thing as a charge of murder. Right. That you should just be able to shoot whoever and whatever you want. Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not stupid people, but they are. It's just like the whole abortion thing. The average person, if you take the rhetoric of the pro-life, pro-abortion argument out, the average person would probably say, like people do say, uh, for the most part, restricted at certain points, at certain other points, not as restricted, but people are reacting to boogeymen. Mm. But I would yeah. say I would say this to you: um, don't don't lose hope with regard to this because it's getting to the point now. One lesson I say we you should consider taking from this situation in Japan: that guy did not buy a manufactured weapon. Right. He built that weapon. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. got the technology now. You know, with three D printers, you can printers. do it internet. You can do you can do almost anything with the internet. Now. Yeah, bombs, everything. It, and so we're at the place where technology allows us to go place to work in the rounds to what we try to do through the law. Right. The law is not going to solve this problem. Yeah, and, and that's sort of where I'm at. I, I, you know, I, I absolutely agree with you about Japan because again, Japan's a country of 125 million people. Yeah, and they had one gun homicide last year in 2021. That is incredible. Uh, but I think well, compa you, compare you, us to any civilized uh, right, uh, uh, right. nation and I, see where I, we, we compare. It. Exactly. Uh, but the, I think the difference between us and Japan is like that's who they are now. Like, and, and this is why I, I don't think that necessarily legislation is going to save us in this situation. Because I remember. <laughs> Like you, you, you hear a lot of people say talk about the the Brady uh, assault weapons ban that happened in the in the mid '90s, but after that, Columbine happened, and all those other. That's when really when the school mass shooting started to take place from '99, 2000, 2001. America has a a society problem. Our our issues are so in, entrenched in the destruction of our communities. And, and our families and of our young people, our young people are so dysfunctional. 
Our families are so dysfunctional that, again, I, I don't necessarily think that even if, say, uh, we would have bring back the Brady weapons assault weapons ban, that it would make too much of a difference at this point. I just think this is who we are at uh, this point. I think with, uh, and that's why I said it was so important for people to vote for Hillary, to vote Democratic when 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 Trump got in, because with with the Supreme Court that we have now, you're going to see a deterioration of all things that 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 would brought some saneness to this to this nation, because they they they're, they're going to just undo everything. There's there's no limit to what they're going to undo. But some and, of the stuff that that's in this nation now, this what you said insanity, uh, it, it, it's it's the chickens that the liberals have hatched. The whole notion of, of the ambiguity of masculinity, that that's not a conservative problem. That's a liberal problem. Yes, yes, you're right on that. When, when, you, right when on you erase that. boundaries and, 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 but, but and you the give question, people nothing to hang on, nothing Reverend, to establish me, on? Reverend, I, I know you're not uh, a proclaimed prophet. I know you're not a psychic prophet. Mm-mm. But where, where do you think this is going to end for America? Oof. I mean, I mean, all of our problems. I'm saying the, from the liberal standpoint as well as the conservative standpoint, where are we going to end up? I think we're just going to end up in destruction. I agree. I agree. Matter of fact, you know what the Bible says, except oh, yeah. the Lord and- had shortened the days, no flesh would be saved. The, the, the conservatives are not, are not pure in this, and the liberals are not the devil. But, right. but each, of them, they, each of them got blood on their hands for different reasons, right. but it yeah. all gets down to the root of each of them thinks that they're smarter than God. Mm. Uh, if, you, if you study uh, uh, the Bible, you, you will come to understand that the world ends back in the East. I really think that we're just going to be wiped out. The, the West is just going to be wiped out. There won't be a United States at the end times, I don't think. I was thinking, I thought that point. too. I have thought yeah. that. Well, I mean, if, if you if you study, if you really study, uh, trying to think the book that I bought that really goes through the whole process. I mean, it, it takes you through the millennium, the the uh, the tribulation, uh, Armageddon, and everything. And it, and the United States, even Astrodamus said, no, Nostradamus, what's his name? His yeah, name was Nostradamus. Nostradamus. What he said was that he saw the eagle fall from the sky. And that's our mascot. That's that's our image. And I, I think it's coming, and it's coming sooner than what we think. Yeah. And, and, and we're, we're, we're involved in everybody else's business. And I know we had to do, because we had a stance at one time prior to World War uh, II to stay out of the, the, the battles in, in Europe and so forth. But we found out that we were not, not an island unto ourselves, but we were being a affected by by the world and and today with the modernization and technology we definitely being affected so we have to be involved in what what we're getting into situations i think it's just leading us down the path this was a christian nation and we have turned away from our god and you know what he did to to his people the israelites we we're adopted into the household but what he did to them he punished them and i think america's got his punishment on its way yep. mm. you mentioned the uh, about the east uh, I just saw an article the other day about TikTok. That uh, that comp- the company that that owns TikTok is a Chinese company, and Chinese government looks at the data of the people who who use TikTok. They are yeah. harvesting that data. Yep. Yeah. They are harvesting that data, and the reason they're harvesting it is for the off chance that they can use you as an operative, they'll have leverage on you from the stuff they call from your TikTok usage and some of these other things. Yeah, I try to tell the young men that I'm mentoring, you be careful what you're putting out there in, in, in the ether because it doesn't come back. and It's not it's not sacred. Once you put it out there, it's there. And, and even though you take it down, doesn't mean that it's not still out there. Now, the reason <laughs> this is important is because China... While we've been staring at Russia and worrying about the Middle East, China has quietly, behind the shadows, been building itself up to challenge yeah. the West for supremacy. Yeah, right. And yeah. they're getting Africa and Latin America on their side. 
well, what, what's going to happen is, is, is Russia and, and China are going to pardon up, and, and, and you, we're going to see what's going to happen to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can see what's going to happen to us. Right. I, I, just, I just think that we have lost uh, uh, our, our roots. For example, why do, why do our young people want to go up there and draw, join the Taliban and other people against our United States? Because we're failing to teach patriotism. We've gotten so liberal in saying that you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't mandate somebody to do the pledge. But you know what? If you don't teach patriotism, and you don't teach love for your own country, if you don't love your own home, my mother told us we will, the Smiths will not fight with each other. We, we, we were a clan. Now, we fought other people, but we didn't fight each other. And, and here we are, we're, we're, we're teaching young people to fight each other. I mean, I, I, I've seen in the generation that's come after me, brothers shooting brothers. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the things that they do to family members. I'm saying, how could you love somebody? Or, or know that they're part of your kin and, 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 and harm them to that degree. I don't understand. I really don't understand. I agree. I agree. Thank <laughs> you for your call, Dr. Okay. Me. It's all good. <laughs> okay, call back anytime. Feel free okay, to be blessed. Uh, feel okay. free to call back anytime, folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, uh, I, you know, Dr. Smith always has uh, some jewels. He always drops jewels on us. Uh, but it is true. Uh, uh, you know, in Japan and in a lot of those other countries, what I personally believe works there would not work necessarily here, specifically because, again, there's 400 million guns in the country already. Yeah. And so you're not going to confiscate all 400 million guns. Even if we stop producing guns tomorrow, we've got enough guns to last us for the next 100, 200 years, okay? And guns are a part of America's self-mythology, it just is. It's a part of Americans see themselves in the mirror and see guns as a part of that. Now, again, we didn't have mass shootings in schools and people shooting up random parades in 1956 or 1966 for the most part. Uh, that's just not uh, Americans did not have that mentality. We had guns. We could have shot up random Fourth of July parades anytime we wanted to. And unfortunately, in the sense, in, in the situations of racial terrorism, uh, in places like Mississippi and Alabama, you had the Klan. Those people did shoot people, but you didn't have regular people. Just I'm going to go and shoot up a parade, or I'm going to walk into a movie theater and shoot as many people as I can. And you definitely didn't have children in 1975 or something going. I'm going to go to school and shoot as many of my classmates as I possibly can. Now, guns existed back then. Okay, it's not like Americans didn't have guns in the 1970s. They did. As I say, we did. I wasn't born at that point, but guns existed. Okay, Mm -hmm. in a lot of these other countries, like, they don't have the gun culture that America does. Americans, I I think there's probably 100 million people, maybe 50 million people. Maybe I'm overstating that, but I'd say about 50 million people in this country who are willing to die to protect their ability to have a gun. Yeah. Like the, those people, you're not going to take 400 million guns away from those people. It's just not going to happen. And like I said, we had guns before this became an issue. I don't think we're going to be able to legislate our way out of this. Again, we're going to have to do this, the community work, the spiritual work to get ourselves out of, uh, of this problem. And, and another thing about what you just pointed out, that type of person, they don't, tend to live in neighborhoods where their next door neighbor is the opposite. Right. And and to be honest, by and large, people who think the opposite of them don't tend to try to live next door to them either. Mm. So I think one of the things you're going to see uh, is a coalescing of these two groups of people on the extremes living clustered up together. And then you've got a bunch of people that are not quite lined up with either one of them they're going to be feel feeling like they're being caught in the middle of a tug of war between these two extreme groups whom you'll never convince that they're wrong right and you know my only question is will we have a breakdown in society before uh that conflict with china takes place because i i i I think that's not a question of if 
Yes. It's just a question of when. Oh yeah, Taiwan. You know, Taiwan. Take a take a peek. Just this week, Taiwan, China said that they are intending to take Taiwan back. It is. It they consider it a part of China. Now the reason Taiwan is so important. Taiwan makes all the semiconductors. Okay, all the semiconductors that go in all of our electronics. We cannot do virtually anything electronically. All of our machines. All that works on semiconductors. Uh, and so Taiwan makes that. We stopped producing them here. We sent them over there. Again, we sent them over to the Far East uh, to be produced over there. And so now Taiwan can, is, I believe, the world's hub of, of semiconductors. And, and China knows this. And if China can control the semiconductors, the things that all of our machines run on, then we're really in trouble. And that's why I think uh, the U.S. government, too, is, is panicking and trying to throw its lot in with Taiwan as well. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on Taiwan, folks. Mm -hmm. All right, Rev. Let's, let's, change, the, let's change the mood a little bit.